Hi, this is the Mahler First Symphony excerpt, and it starts out kind of a moderate tempo, and it's going to speed up more or less gradually. So the important thing is the bow stroke. Shouldn't be too short, shouldn't be on the string, a little brushy. Uh, dynamics, I would say go with the piano. I think the Semper Pianissimo may be, uh, my guess is it's a conducted it somewhere and they were too loud so he wrote Semper Pianis or it's for the rest of the orchestra. So this is the melody, it's not loud. And when you have the accents like the little hats, just use a lot of bow. Uh, one thing I think is useful is to use pretty much the whole bow but flautando so it's still quiet. And of course vibrato. Then you have to immediately move the bow to the middle of the sounding point. Again, a little more bow to start it, but then you've got a safe bow. Like, work your way back to the fingerboard. Uh, without a resolution on a Nachschlag. So then I'd maybe do two ups. And for fingering, for those who need fingerings, fourth finger, go to second, back to four, stay there. I would change the Boeing here. I think these are Philadelphia Orchestra Boeings, so it's not necessarily what you're going to do anyway. Two ups. Very light because pianissimo, and this is a real pianissimo. And although uh, I often play glissando here, don't do it for an audition. Most important crescendo to the low <clears throat> to the low E, which as it's on the D string, you've got to play the D string quite a bit louder. Uh, one other thing I'd point out. The second one is an eighth note with a dot, so have a little bit of lift in the bow so the sound sounds nice and light. I would change bows somewhere wherever you shift, maybe, so that you can be up bow to get ready for the pits. And try to be more or less, try to make it work out so that you can more or less play on the beat, in, even in an audition. G-E-T-H is the abbreviation for geteilt, uh, divided. So just play the top line. And here the tempo is a bit brighter. Uh, not quite. Four bars later it's going to be really more uh, moving. But And be sure the pits don't twang because nobody wants to hear that in a taped audition. I got a question from another student. You can um, play the chords if it's in tune and doesn't twang. Same thing with the double, like, better to play the double stops unless it's, if it's out of tune, then, yeah, just play what. And this is, well, you should probably translate the German on your own to the best of your ability. It's a brighter tempo, and it's tempo primo. On the string. Then I would change this, this is how I recognize it's our bowings. I would do one bow for every four notes. For the forte, now it's fortissimo, so I'll use twice as much bow. Basically hold the fortissimo until the, sh the shift. And this. So that's a little too fast actually, but that's like maximum tempo. So audition, play a little slower. Um, and 11, noch ein wenig beschleunigen, like keep it uh, moving even more, still more. So the whole thing is um <laughs> Thank you.
Beethoven, the first symphony, and I was trying to pick out metronome markings. I think this one is about um, maybe 88 to 92 for the first movement for the half notes. So this is Beethoven. He was, I think, much more careful about the dynamics, at least what we have in the music is, is pretty logical and consistent. So start off pianissimo. The pianissimo goes for good, what, seven bars, eight bars? Uh, yeah, eight bars, and then after that, he begins to crescendo. So you can make, do make phrasing in that, let the line come down, but the notes, the eighth notes need to be clear. And I just have to look because we have our, I think these are also our parts, um, slurs printed over as a tie and actually the first four bars should be completely smooth uh, that is a tie from the first to the second beat so and for fingerings I would do this in first position really until the fourth measure so. For fingerings, go to first finger on the B flat. I tried it a couple of different ways. Go straight and then go from there immediately to fourth to, to a half position. Here it can't be tied because we need to hear the rearticulated G. I would also repeated G, and then straight to the A string, then kind of more important for fingering, second finger um, at the beginning of the crescendo, and kind of just give a little bit of crescendo into the eighth note. You may want to graduate the dynamic thinking that you're starting pianissimo, the next bar is going to be piano, the next bar downbeat mezzo piano, then the second beat mezzo forte, and then forte, but forte shouldn't be so loud in Beethoven because fortissimo should always be a one level above that, so. Oh, and the accents, so a bit heavy on the accents, but release the, and slight retake. And for some of you, I'm going to specifically want to see the connection of the F-sharp to the G. Then these quarter notes, sandos, just a lot of bow and a little vibrato. Back to make sure you're not too loud, forte again, one forte. And these should be quite short. I think it's consistent for three bars. Then when he has the octave figure for two bars, that can be a little longer. And then he rewrites the... Uh, hash marks for the then each of uh, the first of each four sort sando forte piano is uh, we have just a short note so just play it and get out of the way don't worry about trying to it's too fast to do anything more than that Oh yeah, yeah, and make sure that the tone, I'm going to check on the cat, make sure the tone on the low F is good and well supported. Hey Ziggy. Oh, we've got a mouse, a toy mouse. is actually faster than the uh, first movement, I would say more like 96 or uh, 96 to 100 maybe. Um, and, oh yes, I don't like the bowing that is printed here. Uh, I think it might be our parts again. I, uh, we played it this year. 
so just separate Boeing's the way Beethoven wrote it and the hash marks on the first and second beats should be of course lighter and uh, shorter <laughs> This bow stroke, in spite of it being hash marks, I wouldn't play it too picky for an audition because you want a little rounder sound uh, and it, it goes on for a long time. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I did not look up the dynamic. Um, I think it's just piano, I don't think it's pianissimo, so we'll go with that, but uh, I'll try to check that for the next one. on the C string and crossing just for one note, although one, one student that actually worked better, so. Then I would go to second position, do most of this in second, a little bit between first position, back to second, fourth position, Basically, you just need to jump down to third position for one low C and go back. Also, let the phrasing ya pa 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 not too loud on the low note. So, have the phrase the bar before the sforzando go towards that down before the sforzando. First three are shorter, specifically marked shorter, and then let the last one just kind of trail off. So it may not sound all that different. But now let's go to the uh, last movement. So this is a faster tempo. I think uh, 120 is kind of the slowest, like reasonable performance tempo. Um, the eighth notes will start to be sounding a bit slow on, at that speed. 132 is a good. Uh, kind of performance speed, but it's always good in the audition to maybe take things about one notch slower than you would do in a live performance. Uh, okay, again, Beethoven starting forte, sforzando on the second beat of the second bar, then four bars later, the same phrase in the minor as fortissimo. Then when we get to the, oh, and if it's not clear in your part, <laughs> That's just a bowing with two uh, dots over the notes, meaning two ups. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a slur over the two dots, so that they're two up bows. Then you get to the scales. Hit the note, and back off, then you're going to need to retake fast. So the first one is two beats, of course, you cut off on the second beat, the third, the third beat that you're tied, which is the second beat of the second bar of that. And um, basically to that note and like a 16th rest. Keep the vibrato going, then it sounds a bit carried over. And be sure that you practice like everything in the same tempo. I don't want to hear, none of us will on the jury want to hear this, the eighth note suddenly faster than the sixteenth or anything like that. So that's pretty much it. It's a, This one is more of a technical one, so once you get that solved, there's not a whole lot else to do, just you know, a little phrasing. So. Sorry, I keep 
playing the wrong note. <laughs> I'd take it a touch slower. So, uh, one other thing I just thought about. Uh, it's I think in Beethoven it can be useful to think of when he writes forte as more like a mezzo forte, like a big sound but not loud at all. Like give yourself lots of room to go to fortissimo. So you may want even to even write in mezzo forte for the beginning. <laughs>